Lesson 12.1c, Reading Scales on Axes, Coordinate Plane. Take a look at this coordinate plane, this grid. We see the numbers along here. This is the scale for x, and this is the scale for y. And the scale of an axis is the number of units that each grid line represents. The scale on these axes are one unit. It's going one, two, three, four. Some graphs use different increments. On this first coordinate plane, one unit is equal to 10. A, point A, is at 30 for X and 10 for Y. This graph has one unit is equal to 100. Point A is at 300 for X and 100 for Y. And this is labeled as one unit is equal to 100 because the piece of paper that would have this graph going up to 100 would have to be pretty large if we did one unit was one square. So by making the scale in increments of 100, we can use a smaller graph. A coordinate plane also indicates directions. We have this as north, here's south, here's west, and here's east. This would be positive numbers, this would be negative numbers, this would be negative numbers on the x, and this would be positive numbers on the x. And I've always taught that you can remember which is west and which is east because we can remember north is up, south is down, and we go across. So we have W-E, we go across. This graph shows the location of a city, and it also shows the location of Sam's house and Tala's house. And the scale on each axis represents miles. So we have 10 miles, 20 miles, 30 miles, 40 miles, and so on. Sam's house is at, we need the X and Y coordinates for Sam's house. Starting from the origin, we see we're going into the negatives, so we have negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, that would be negative 50 for X. We look at the Y value, and we can see that it's going 10, 20, 30, 40, so it's one increment, it's one unit, it's 10. And it's a positive 10 because it's up here, it's not down here. So we have a positive 10. So his house is blank miles, how many miles from the city? If that's the city, then remember distances are always positive. That means it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 miles from the city. In what direction? Is this east or west of the city? Here's the city and here's Sam. So remember, we go across, so this is west. So he's west of the city. And blank miles, how many miles is he north of the city? Well, one increment is 10. So that would be 10 miles and since that's the city and we're heading north, it would be 10 miles north of the city. Tala's house is at, now we need the X and Y values for Tala's house. She's 20, 40, that must be 50, and that's a positive 50. And the Y value, we look and she's 10, 20, 30 for Y, and that's a positive 30. Her house is blank miles from the city. So it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And that would be east of the city. If we go across, that's west, that's east. She's 50 miles east of the city. And She's 10, 20, 30 miles, and that's north. We're heading north, so that's north of the city. So we can look 
at a coordinate plane as if it's a map. And we can see locations and use the increments as miles, or it could be feet or meters even. So here again, the scale on each axis represents miles. It's saying Sam lives blank miles from Gus. Well, here's Sam, and we know that each unit is 10, so that would be 10 miles. We can go from Sam and count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Sam lives 60 miles from Gus. And here's Bob. Sam lives blank miles from Bob. We can count each square, each unit, as 10, 10, 20, 30. He lives 30 miles from Bob. Now remember, even though we're going into the negative, a distance is always positive. If you drive in reverse and go two miles, you still went two miles. It's a positive two. So distances are always positive. Even though we went down into the negatives here, heading south, it was still a positive 30, okay? Now take a look at this coordinate plane, this graph, it shows four units is equal to one. That means one unit is one-fourth, or 25 hundredths, and two units is two-fourths, or one-half, if it's simplified, or five-tenths, and three units would be three-fourths, or 75 hundredths. We can see point A, Here's 2, and we have 2 and 25 hundredths on x, and if we go up 1 and a half, or 1 and 5 tenths, that would be the y coordinate. For b, we look and see that it's at negative 2 for the x value, and it's right in the middle of the origin 0 and 1. That's halfway. That's half. So we can write the y-coordinate as half. So for an ordered pair, we have x, then y. The first number is the x-coordinate, and it tells us the number of units to the right or left that the point is from the origin. Remember, the origin's dead center right here. And the second number is the y-coordinate, and it tells us the number of units above or below the point is from the origin, okay? So we have x, then y, and many students get these confused and they put the y first. It's x first and then y. They're in alphabetical order. When you say the alphabet, you say x, y, z. x comes first, okay? We're finished with the third part. We're gonna move on to the fourth part, graphing rational numbers, identifying points. Maybe you can think of your own way to remember that X is first and then comes Y. You can use my either in alphabetical order way. You can also remember that X is going across horizontally because I make it green like green grass on land going across. And, and I've said in previous lessons, you can remember Y is the axis that goes up because we remember Y to the sky. Have a really nice day. And I hope you join me for the last part of this lesson. Bye.